We now move to the next concept, the average acceleration. By definition, the average acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. Notice I said velocity, I didn't say speed. An object can have constant speed and still have acceleration. We'll talk more about this as we go on. Acceleration is a tricky thing, and the reason it is tricky is human beings are born with eyes. And as eyes, we use these primarily as the way that we gather information about our universe. And the eyes enable us to notice position. We also have a sense of time. We have a bodily clock, if you would. Because we can see the change in the position as we watch an object, and because we can know time, we can either say, well, that happened quickly or that happened slowly, our brain can basically calculate one derivative and find velocity. However, our brain doesn't enable us to calculate, in essence, two derivatives. That is, it does not enable us to tell easily change in velocity. For this reason, for thousands of years, people attached everything about motion and what caused the world to go around to velocity. We're going to find out that the real key concept is acceleration. We'll do this in chapter 4, but I just give you a heads up that the fact that students have so much trouble with this isn't surprising. Some of the brightest people in the world had trouble with this for several thousands of years. In order to find the average acceleration, let's go down here and give yourself the units and the formula using our definition. The symbol for acceleration, as you might guess, is going to be A. And because it's an average, we'll put AV on it. And from the definition, change in velocity, delta V, and divided by delta T. When you're going through, oops, sorry about that. When you're going through physics and learning physics, it is important that you not read math equations like this. A is equal to delta V over delta T. The reason that it's important that you don't do that is that doesn't mean anything. You need to know what those symbols tell you. So when you read a math equation, you should be able to say it in words. And likewise, when you read the definition in words, you should be able to, in your head, see the math equation. This ability to speak both languages and go between it's like going between Spanish and English and English to Spanish is essential if you're going to do well. So for instance, I don't say A. This A average, I say average acceleration is defined as the change in velocity divided by the change in time. And when I'm looking up here, I can see when I see the word change, I see a delta. And when I see the word velocity, I see that V over the change in time, the delta over T. And over means to divide. You need to be able to do it both ways. All right. Moving on, let's get the units. Our formula gives us units here. The units are in meters per second for delta V, but then I divide it by another second, so this is meters per second squared. And that's the units for all types of acceleration, not just average acceleration. To find the direction of the average acceleration, this is kind of like the trickiness of finding the average velocity. It is the same direction as the change in the velocity vector. So the way to find the direction of the average acceleration is to find delta V and then you know the average acceleration points in the same direction. Again, this is this consequence of multiplying a vector by a scalar. By the way, you'll notice the delta V, change in velocity. When you had position and you had change in position, it has a special name called displacement. Change in velocity doesn't have a special name. It's just change in velocity. Let's do some examples showing how we can put this sort of stuff together. The first one is kind of a graphical. I have a ball here, right here. 
and it's going at some velocity v1 in this direction. And then some later time, the ball is now located over here. And it's got a new velocity, at least in direction, possibly a magnitude. The magnitude, we'd have to measure the length of this arrow and the length of that arrow to see if that changed. But certainly, the arrows are no longer the same. This one is going in a different direction. And for instance, they might want to know, what's the direction of the average velocity? Well, the way we would do that was we would come up here and best I can, I'm going to just draw to the side here a velocity of arrow V1. And then I'm going to draw my final velocity vector, let's say close as I can, look something like that from the diagram. And then I remind you how we did position because it was a vector. It's the vector that you add to your initial to get to your final. Well, that appears to be kind of like that. So that would be the direction delta V. Well what we just got through saying was A may be longer, it may be shorter. But it points in the same direction that delta V does. So it does not point in the direction of the ball that's going here. It doesn't point in the direction of the ball that's going there. It points in the change. And this is one of the problems. Your eye can kind of tell you which way V1 is. And it can tell you which way V2 is, but your brain isn't good about finding the difference. So it doesn't see the change in velocity well, and therefore it also doesn't tell you where, del where A is. That's just one of the difficulties students have. Let's look at this with some numbers now. Maybe the person gives you something like this on the test. A ball is initially traveling at 20 meters per second in the positive x direction. Five seconds later, the ball is traveling at 20 meters per second in the y direction. First question they might ask is, what's the change in the speed of the ball? Well, the speed means not the direction, just the magnitude. And the original magnitude was 20 meters per second. And the final magnitude is 20 meters per second. How did 20 meters per second change? It didn't. Change in speed. is zero. However, and this again gets back to the difference about what people talk about and what physicists talk about. The thing we're interested in is not the change in speed, it's the change in velocity. This gets us eventually to acceleration, and acceleration we'll find in chapter four is what's connected to forces, not speed. So we need to calculate the change in velocity. And that's what the second question asks in this problem. It says, what's the change in velocity? Well, let's write the final velocity and the initial velocity. Uh, final velocity was going zero meters per second. Oh, tell you what, let's be consistent with our textbook. We're using 2 for the final instead of F. It's going 0 meters per second I hat. And it's going 20 meters per second in the Y direction. And we'll go ahead and draw that here. Oops. Let's be turn my straight line drawer on. It's going like that. That's 20 meters per second and that's in the y direction. This over here is x. The ball initially in the problem was going 20 meters per second along the x direction. So it was going in this direction. So the velocity did change. Those two arrows are not identical. They've changed directions. They may not change lengths, 
but they've changed directions. So V1 was 20 meters per second I hat plus 0 meters per second J hat. And I'm asked to find delta V. To find delta V, I take this and subtract that. Minus 20 meters per second in the x direction. And this minus that is plus 20 meters per second in the y direction. So the correct answer to the problem is this. Of course, my drawing, I want to check my work to make sure I do my math right. And to do that, I'm asking, here's where I started. And I got over there. So that's my delta V. And you can see that sure enough, it went negative in the X and it went positive in the Y. And by the way, I can even tell you what that is. It's 20 times the square root of 2, or 20 times 1.414 in meters per second. So we're going about something on the order of, uh, let's say, 28, 29 meters per second is the change. So, an important fact out of that, we now can then find out what is the average acceleration. Well, average acceleration, oops, is defined as delta V over delta T. So let's see, we had minus 20 meters per second I hat plus 20 meters per second J hat. And we said that that occurred, I believe it said five seconds was the time in the problem. So we divide that by five seconds. So we get minus 4 meters per second squared in the x direction plus 4 meters per second squared in the j direction. So it still points the same way as my little arrow before, but because I divided by 5, or in, in other words, multiplied by 1 fifth or 0.2, it's only as fifth as long. Main thing, notice that the direction of the velocity vector the changed, not the magnitude. Didn't matter. If you have either type of change, you have acceleration. Another way to say this is as follows. Any, any object not traveling in a straight line must be accelerating. 